St. John Chrysostom says to us that vanity is related to pride even as the boy is related to the man, as, as wheat is related to the bread. So vanity, vainglory, is a seed that can grow within us to pride. And as we all know, pride was the cause of even an angel's fall from heaven and a whole host of angels with him. So pride is something we must take seriously and we must recognize where it begins, where it grows. And that is in vain glory. So what is this vain glory then that St. John and so many of the fathers and St. Paul talk about? Well, vain glory, vanity, is really literally empty glory. Vain glory is an empty glory. And it is empty because it is earthly glory. Earthly glory is empty. Two real reasons why. The first is simply that when we die, earthly glory, vain glory will end. Vainglory cannot save us from death. Vainglory is transient. It is limited to this life in this world and then it passes and it is gone. We think of all the, the great figures in history, the kings, the queens, the generals, who have been glorified by the masses and yet they lie in the grave just like every pauper and slave. Worldly glory will come to an end. It is empty. But there is a more profound reason why worldly glory is considered empty by the Church Fathers, by, by St. Paul. St. Paul says in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, What do you have that you have not received? St. Paul says. What do you have that you have not received? And if you have received it, why do you boast? How can you boast in anything that has been given to you? And of course, everything, every, every good thing is given by God, for God is the giver of all good gifts. And so, it is empty to boast it is empty to allow vainglory to grow within us because it is a denial of reality, the truth, the truth of God as the source of all these gifts, the good gifts that he has given us. How can we be vainglorious about what we consider natural endowments, our natural abilities? For one, it may be great strength, another intelligence, Another, some may consider beautiful. These natural endowments, they are no reason for boastfulness or for earthly glory, vainglory. There are two ways that God gives us these, these endowments, he, how he, he grants us these abilities, these, these qualities. God gives by nature and by grace. Every one of us, we may recognize something in ourselves that perhaps people have observed, even as children, a certain quality that was there. Maybe we were very organized or very capable or very confident at this or that. Certain qualities that seem to be there by nature. And of course, the Church Fathers remind us these are gifts given to us by God, by nature. For God is the giver of all good things. But if we, if we cannot be trusted with these gifts, the gifts God has given us by nature, which are trifling compared with the gifts given by grace, how can we be trusted with those greater treasures? If we boast, if we enter into an empty self-glorification over the natural gifts that God has given us, we cut ourselves off from the gifts that God will give us by grace. 
God, in his love and mercy, will not permit gifts through grace to come to us if they will cause us harm. And if we boast over those gifts that are natural to us, how much more harm would we do to ourselves if we had these greater gifts, the greater treasures that are the signs of the kingdom of God? We have to acknowledge and not deny the true source of all good things. The gifts of God are so precious, but the gifts of grace are the highest amongst them. These gifts that God gives us to purify us, to make us holy, to enable us to draw closer to him, to comfort us. God gives us so many wondrous, miraculous gifts by grace, but God will withhold them if we show him that we would only damage ourselves with them if we would use them to become vainglorious. Too often we are so quick to judge God. Too often we apply very human, fallen motives to God. But everything that God does, everything, everything that God does in the way he deals with us is rooted in his love for us. And when God denies us the gifts of his grace, it is an act of his mercy because we have shown what we will do with these gifts. So we must begin now with these natural gifts to show him that we honor him, that we use them for his glory, for his service, and in no way to glorify ourselves. The only glory that isn't empty, of course, is heavenly glory. The Church Fathers encourage us to distinguish between vain glory, earthly glory, and heavenly glory. Saint John Climacus encourages us, he says, anyone who secretly is vainglorious about any of his natural endowments, his intelligence, his strength, any quality given to him, will never receive these, these wondrous gifts of God's grace. But we who try, who struggle, who repent, and of course every one of us will fail, every one of us will fall, we must get back up again, but God sees this, and this act of repentance draws his grace. He blesses us in our struggle when we get up, and enables us to distinguish between what are heavenly and what are earthly. The heavenly glories we are encouraged by St. Paul to seek after. It is, not, it is not pride, it is not selfishness that encourages us to seek after the glories of God's kingdom. Let us seek the eternal gifts. Let us receive by rejecting all temptations to earthly glory. It does desire and love the eternal things of God. Let us recognize what is truly eternal. Love, forgiveness, humility, compassion, long-suffering, patience, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We see Christ. How is he glorified before the world? He is glorified even to the cross, even to torture and death, even to rejection and isolation, humiliation before the baying crowds, in obedience. He is glorifying God in that moment as the Son of the Living Father. And we are called to all of these things, to obedience, to humility, and to love and as Christ even as he died put to death by our sin prayed father forgive them for they know not what they do we are to love and forgive we are called to love with the love of God himself this is how we glorify God this is how we thank him this is how we demonstrate our gratitude to him 
and within our lives here now to the world. These gifts, this capacity to, to love and forgive, to begin to humble ourselves, these endowments from God are truly gifts of grace. We are not capable. We are not capable of remotely imitating Christ in all that he does without God's grace. None of us is capable. But by rejecting the temptations of empty, earthly glory, we begin to move closer to God and to seek the glory that he calls us to, to embrace and to seek and to love. We move closer to him. So let us always then acknowledge the true source of every gift. And through our love, through our forgiveness, through our repentance, let us truly thank God for all he's given us.